Hey, Pumpkin. Pumpkin, say hi. It's been a long time. You're not going to say hi. Pumpkin, we're trying to do a video here. Hey, say hi, Pumpkin. Yeah, that's my baby girl. So sweet, Pumpkin. It's time for a garden tour, Pumpkin. Are you excited? Yeah, you don't get very excited. That's okay. I love you, Pumpkin. Anybody want to go outdoors? Dogs? Anywhere? Where are my dogs? Tucker? Tucker? Come on, Tuck. Let's go outdoors. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. I know. The floor is scary. The floor is lava. You can do it. Come on. Come on. You do, okay, you don't have to. What about you? What's your excuse? You're just not listening? You're just doing whatever you want? Come on, Toby. Let's go. Come on. Come on. There we go. Finally getting brave. What is going on when I have to beg my dogs to go outside? You know, y'all have it pretty good out here. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. Long introduction. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Time for the June garden tour. Real quick, before I get going on that, I want to say thank you so much for all the kind, inspirational, just lovely, warm comments on my last video. I can't even explain to you how much better I felt reading just everyone's stories and what everybody's been through and and just the love and support. It means the world. I, I wasn't expecting it and I like I'm basically speechless over it. It's just thank you all so, so, so much. Uh, no updates in that arena, not there yet. So I have another surgery and more biopsies and for now, hanging out in the garden, having a good time. The, you know, not much happened in June for anybody who hasn't been around and known what's been going on. I don't really feel like going over it again because it's kind of emotionally exhausting. But if you watch my last video, you'll be up to speed. Haven't been able to do much out here. So uh, not a lot will have changed since the garden tour from May, except things are bigger and much more colorful. So just walk around and see how things have grown a little bit. Maybe talk about some things I hope to get done depending on if I can get someone to do them for me because I can't I can't do the planting things right now. Uh, there have been a few little things I've been able to do. You know, I'm not, I can't pick anything up heavy with the shoulder situation, but I did mean I threw some plants in a pot here mostly just because I've been panicking to get all the annuals that are in little containers tucked into something because once that heat in July gets here you know they'll be toast so I'm just trying to get some things done and this doesn't look great but that's what happens to annuals when they sit in those little pots and it starts to get hot outside so I have a super tunia vista bubble gum in here that's just looking fantastic isn't it no not quite actually I'll probably give that like a 50% cut back so it can fill back out a little bit here is a caladium I don't recall the name of this one for sure it was in a planter over here last year and I dug it up with the rest of my caladium bulbs I think it's called like moonlight or super moon white or super white one of those it has very large beautiful i mean white leaves with green veining but this is just the growth that these have put out from not too long ago i just replanted their bulbs back in early may i want to say i was pretty far behind on getting that done so this they've been doing a lot this variety of caladium does get pretty big and i think that what's really neat about these is the inside here along the stems it's kind of hard to see on camera but there's some really pretty green stripes that run all the way up the stem and then to the foliage and that foliage is just beautiful and cute i like the white out here same reason i described it last year for this area because it's near a light which currently doesn't work because everything's broken but when the light works at nighttime you get the illumination on all the different white and variegated things and it helps kind of brighten the entire area up and it's just a lovely contrast i also uh, threw a couple of gloxinias in here some uh, variegated sun patients once those fill out this whole thing is going to look much more impressive there's a heliconia back here it's a chosiania chosiana i've never great at saying the name but that will also fill out and add more orange that goes through everything there's a dragon's wing begonia hiding back there not much to say about it yet still needs to grow in the background there's a limetime coleus right behind that micro irrigation head the idea there is hopefully that that will kind of come up and have that pretty chartreuse green backdrop to everything to help add contrast to what's in the front and pull the eyes back and it's just it's just pretty but you know it just it needs to fill out but this is literally the month of june it's about all i've done but i have had other people help me out with a few little things mostly watering but uh there's there's plenty of stuff to do out here. Gardens are never complete, right? Eureka palms looking good. I haven't been able to get this hanging basket hung up, the one that we put together in a video. I don't know. It was sometime in May, but um, you know, y'all know what's going on. Haven't been able to get a hanger put up on the wall to hang it. But it looks nice and it's stand over there. The Kalakaja Hawaiian punch that's in there started to pop up. 
and looks okay. The Mr. Freckles curtain over here is looking great. That's one of my favorite ones. It really needs to be repotted, but it's doing well. It's been probably one of the hardiest, most vigorous curtains I've ever grown. I mean, it goes through winter inside like a champ. It's a really sturdy plant. The vegetable garden. Um, I kind of walked away from this project because, you know, there have been things going on and uh, it, the things are growing. <laughs> Just um, not necessarily how I would like them to be, but it's okay. I did notice a hornworm on this tomato over here, and I uh, did something a lot of people I'm sure would disagree with, but I decided to let it live. Because here's the thing with the hornworms, it'd be more fun to talk about if I could find it. Because they're really pretty to look at. You can see where it was chewing on things back there, which means it's probably somewhere in that area. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Do you see it? Really? You're going to go out of focus as soon as I turn the camera on? Yeah, back there it's hanging upside down from a leaf. So, hornworms. Really devastating to tomato plants. They'll just destroy them, but I don't have the heart to kill it. And I just feel like karmically right now, I need to leave it alone. The thing with the hornworms, I'm going to see if I can get closer. There we go. There's that hornworm. So, big, beautiful caterpillar. See why it's called a hornworm? Because it has that horn on its butt there and it's crawling its head up to protect itself because it's scared of me rightfully so this is probably pretty terrifying like i was saying uh, they really they're not great to have in your tomato plants they destroy them uh, but what's neat about them is they turn into hummingbird moths hummingbird moths are excellent pollinators so i was like well if it's just the one i guess it can stay i can just go to the grocery store and get tomatoes maybe this year i've decided i planted these for the hornworms i know there are going to be a lot of people who disagree with this decision but it just kind of is what it is i don't have the heart to, i mean look at the look at its fat little chubby legs it's just it's just the cutest little creepy thing there is so um i'll keep my eyes peeled and i'm not gonna let them like completely destroy the tomato garden but um for now, I'm just admitting to doing something that you really shouldn't do. You shouldn't just let them be here, but feels like the right thing to do. I'd admit, I mean, they're pretty stinking cute. Creepy, but pretty cute and also devastating. I'm sure there are people who absolutely despise these critters because of, I mean, they just, they destroy your tomato plants. But I've only seen the one so far. Where there's one, there's usually more. I can get more tomatoes at the grocery store. They can have them. This is just, it's a weird year and I'm just, I'm gonna just let it be. It's fine. Peppers are doing well. The uh, poblano over here doing great. A mazel basil flushing out with lots of new growth. Some animal like absolutely destroyed that and actually kind of did me a favor because it gave it its own cutback and it's fluffing back out and looking nice. So there's my, here's my vegetable garden, which is literally just, I plop things in here and walked away from it because, you know, there's, there's a lot of other things going on and stuff to do. Windmill palm got a very heavy prune today, which is kind of exciting. I don't really prune that very often. They hold onto their foliage for a long time, but it's been going through a nice growth spurt. So I went ahead and cut some foliage off and it's flushing out with new growth and looking good. Look at the fireball bromeliads. Aren't they beautiful? One of my absolute favorites. The more sun they get, the more intense their colors get and the more vibrant they are. It's so nice having bromeliads that can take the sun and they're pretty low maintenance. I mean, this one, you know, I make sure it gets splashed with water and it just grows and grows and grows. You can see where there's some green coming through on some of the foliage there, but it's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It gets a lot of morning sun and then the light's filtered throughout the rest of the day from the pine trees above it and like I said it just just keeps on growing getting bigger and bigger and bigger a nice low maintenance plant I appreciate low maintenance plants that really put on a show um and then over here everything's a mess welcome to my mess still have this table of gingers and everything here everything all the things here that I need to repot and get some of those in the ground so I will probably be working on it sometime this week maybe I don't know the weather's forecast is kind of weird they're saying like we could get like anywhere from one to six inches of rain tonight talk about a heck of a variation right i don't know i, I don't know how much rain we're going to get but uh, it might rain for a few days and then i have like surgeries and stuff going on but eventually these are all going to get potted up into larger containers some of them are going to go on the ground these were all in a video a couple videos ago and i talked about what was over here and not a lot to update with these planters the kalakajas the maui gold are looking great i love their glossy foliage getting bigger than i i thought they would so probably 
wasn't the best place to put them, but I don't care because they're pretty and I just wanted them someplace where I could look at them and appreciate them. The um, sun, not sun impatience, the New Guinea impatience I put back here aren't doing much, but I think that's partially because I have this table over here and I really need to get that out of the way because I think it's putting a little bit too much shade in this area for them. So I need to get that moved out of the way. Hey, the lotus, this is from back in the springtime. I talked about this lotus and how I thought that it was going to die because I thought I pulled out of its dormancy way too early, but looks like it's pretty tough because not only did it come back, but it's got flower buds on it. So it's going to have some really nice looking flowers on it here and not too long. You can tell it needs more sun though. You see how the, the leaves are. Can you tell what direction the sun comes from? Yeah, so I, I should probably move this to a bit more of a direct sun spot. I don't have a ton of direct sun left in my backyard though, so maybe I'll just have to accept this for what it is. It's just, just That's kind of the theme this year, right? This is the planter from the foxtail palm, which I guess would be more evident if I actually showed you the foxtail palm. It's all the way up there. I did do this in a video or in a vlog where I put the Supertunia Vista bubble gum in here with a couple purple wave petunias and some sun impatience in the back and a random lantana I had in the middle. And when I did this, what, what I really wanted to do was to see how well those wave petunias would keep up with the Supertunia Vista bubblegum. Because, you know, the Supertunia Vista bubblegum, not many petunias outperform that one. And I wasn't expecting the wave petunias to outperform it, but I was more just curious if maybe the Vista bubblegum might be too aggressive to even put with the wave petunia. But it, they're actually working well together and nothing's being choked out. And I like having the purple petunias around because they smell fantastic let me tell you outside at nighttime with these petunias that are over here combined with these planters the ones around the pool it just oh evening time it smells heavenly out here just from a few purple petunias it's amazing how fragrant they are very nice very fragrant i know there are varieties out there called like the evening sensation and um they i think proven winners has one or is that the one from proven winners i don't remember there's so many varieties of petunias and annuals out there now but the thing is I've never grown a purple petunia that doesn't smell nice ever so and I've grown I think it was called evening sensation or it might have been like heavenly scent that one a few years ago and it smelled nice but to me it didn't smell any bit better than just your regular purple petunia and it didn't grow any better either but None of the petunias did that year. The weather was weird and things were too wet. And it really just the Vista bubblegum did well that year. So I can't really say much else about that. I'm noticing my sun patient that's in this planter right up here is looking kind of thirsty. And I have this pot on drip. So that's a little bit of a concern. We have to double check and make sure that that's running properly. But yeah, these planters looking great you can tell which ones are the vistas versus the regular petunias right and look at that super tunia vista silverberry and then the super tunia vista paradise right here amazing growth nice and big beautiful luscious plants and then you have the super tunia honey which is not a vista and then there's another purple white petunia there just for color and scent and the you come back around this way and again Lots and lots of growth, looking very pretty. I have rotated these so that the sunlight comes through on them a little bit more evenly, uh, mostly because this one wasn't getting as much light as this one. So originally when I planted them up, I made it so that they would mirror each other for when you're going down the steps or coming out of the steps, but then I rotated them so they don't really match. But you can certainly tell which side gets more sun, right? Well, look at that. It's just an absolute rainbow and it's not even July yet and just color everywhere. Probably by far my favorite planters I've done this year. They're a little bit chaotic, but I mean, so is me. <laughs> so is me. You got what I'm saying. And then the garden bed over here, haven't done anything with it, but there's been a bunch of growth. Pardon the hose. Still need to get a hose reel. Been saying that for two years. They're just so darn expensive and I can't even find one that's like less than 200 bucks for a one inch hose. So that's, it's really neither here nor there. The Secrecia, the Secrecia, Secrecia, sorry, Palita, Wandering you or the Purple Heart plants, they're doing very well, much better than I expected. I always get nervous with this area because there's a sprinkler head that comes up right here. And uh, in years past, that's like been a little bit too wet for them. I wasn't worried about that with the lemon coral sedums because they really, they can go dry or wet as long as the soil drains well and they have the warmth, they're usually just fine. And uh, you know, when I planted this area up, I really crammed stuff in here mostly because I was like, well, this might do well this time of year, but then when the heat rolls in, the petunias might melt out. So 
This way things will kind of keep going. And it was an experiment throwing the petunias in the ground on the spot. My hope was that since they're on a slope, that there would be enough um, drying in the soil, I guess, enough drainage, the water is going to come down to the front of the slope more than up top so that they wouldn't rot when it gets really, really hot outside. And so far that's been the case, but also hasn't gotten really, really hot. We've only been in the 90s a few times, which is very unusual. I'm sure when July gets here, that will change. <laughs> Probably change very quickly. You okay, Tuck? Why are you limping? You all right, bud? You okay? He's an old man. So that's this area. The gingers are coming up. There won't be much to say about those until they start blooming. Chinese fan palms are doing well. Banana trees are over here. Oh my goodness. My helper forgot to water a plant. <laughs> uh, gonna need to handle that. Elpinia, a little bit thirsty. I guess it'll be okay, especially if we get six inches of rain tonight, but I'll water that right now just to be safe. That doesn't look good. Lots of growth in the bananas. They're doing really well this year. I think it's because we had such an incredibly mild winter. But they've just had that nice quick boost to keep them moving and going since it didn't take them a long time to woke up. The bananas started popping up out of the ground in, I don't know, March maybe? Late March, which is about a month earlier than usual. It's these bananas over here that have really done the bulk of the growing. This clump in particular always gets much bigger than the others, and it, it's still, you know, well, it's only been summer for a few days, technically, so they still have lots of time to grow. These are probably gonna get huge this year, and I haven't fertilized. So I've amended all the soil this spring, but no fertilizer, so this is just with some nice compost being worked into the roots and everything, and they're looking good. Looking nice and big, a little bit crispy. Cause you know, May and March, May and March, May and April ended up being very cool months. And then a few hot days and the plants were like, they just sort of freaked out like they didn't know what to do. Cause they got used to this very odd, mild temperate weather that we were having that we don't normally have. And that weather was great for a lot of growth, but again, it still kind of shocked them when normal weather came through. And that's the same thing with these elephant ears up front. These are the bikini teenies. Some of them got a little bit crispy. I actually had my helper come through and dig all the ones up that were in the front so that this drain path right here would be more open. And then they put them back there and they're gonna have to recover. You know, when you dig up a kalakaja, they throw a fit, but they'll be okay. And then I had, I had a six pack of orange sun impatience and a six pack of pink sun impatience, just to mimic what I just showed you before in that other garden bed. And I said, okay, now if you could just stagger those, alternate orange and pink, from the front of the garden bed, then that would be fantastic. I'd appreciate that. So much help, thank you. And um, I might leave it like this just because I find it a little bit endearing, but here's what they did. I know it's kind of hard to see because of all the foliage in front of everything, but there's a dozen sun and patients just tucked right in next to each other. And I'm okay with it, it's fine. Uh, but I mean, chances are we're gonna get them spread out appropriately. There's a dozen sun and patients just in this one little 18 inch spot. Hey, beggars can't be choosers. I'm just happy to have someone out here helping me with things. And uh, the pineapple lilies are looking great, but the kawakajas are growing into them. I've talked about these before. They tend to just kind of travel along and they take over. It's a pretty invasive kawakaja. If I didn't live in zone six, I don't know for sure if I would grow them because I think they would just absolutely take over the entire garden. But because of the colder winters and everything, I think that does a better job at kind of keeping them back a little bit more. They don't have quite as long of a season to spread and they're very easy to control. You just reach down and pull them up and I never thought I'd have elephant ears that where I need to pull them up because they're growing so aggressively, but I'm happy to have them because they're very pretty. They'll look better when things fill out a little bit more and the sprinkler systems get up and running and everything like that. Look at the Alexander palm. So pretty, it makes me very happy. No updates with it though, it's just, I mean, it's still here. It's still a palm tree. The magnolia tree that was there, that's been gone. I think I talked about that in the last garden tour. I have someone hopefully coming over in a few days, I just kicked my tripod, sorry, to get this orange tree out of here because there's way too much sun for it over here. Potted it up in a 30 gallon container, so um, I can't move that with my shoulder stuff going on, so. Have to wait for a helper to get that moved into the shade because it's just the poor thing's gonna cook here it's getting tons and tons of water but it's still not enough and once that july heat rolls in it'll be toast so hopefully that'll get moved here in just like a day or two it should be fine but yeah i mean that's what happens when you dig a tree up it's gonna take them a year or two to recover from that and it'll be okay though i have all kinds of perennials ready to go into this area here but have to wait for somebody else to plant them 
for me and that'll hopefully be happening in a couple weeks you know I've talked about my last video I'm kind of in a place of just you know what I can get done I'll get done and that's fine and what I can't that's fine too I'm enjoying my garden for what it is right now as opposed to what I had originally planned which was to have a lot of projects and things going on but things happen and you just kind of got to go with it this is I love my garden and uh, this isn't like the best way to represent myself and my care for plants but right now kind of my last priority and I'm sure you know what I mean especially if you watch my last video more of a take good care of what I have and I'm not really spending a lot of time thinking about what else I could add there's enough here there's a lot of stuff to work with can make it beautiful as it is I mean it already is beautiful it's just I have this whole big blank slate here that I didn't have before but I have the shrubs to go in there there's some crepe myrtles here a dwarf shrub variety and some akubas that I don't think actually are going to be able to go over here because the sun's too strong but I have a bunch of palms to go over here sable miners and then some needle palms and it's gonna look beautiful <laughs> just just have to get the stuff planted and then it's gonna be stunning I promise or maybe not maybe in the July garden tour it'll look just like this we will see the laurel hedge well they're thirsty they're in a sprinkler system so that's a little bit odd but this whole berm's looking good nothing's changed there i did have to weed out some of these pedicets a little bit oh and i found i didn't talk about this in the last video or the last garden tour i found another skip laurel i got this back in march or april in clearance i mean you can see why but it was only like 18 bucks maybe i paid too much but look it's got new growth coming out and that's exciting because i wanted to put another one back behind Oh, Fig's got some scorch on it. That's okay. This corner back here, it bugs me. I have a thing about corners. I think it's nice to fill them in and do something with them. So I wanted to put another one of these skip orals in there. And I think that that, the cheap clearance one, good spot for it. So I don't need to go buy another $80 shrub when I can get one that's just a little bit sad looking for less than 20 bucks. Lollipop putting up its flowers. This is the Pakistakis. Ludia, you know, I bring this inside in the winter into my grow space and I tend to just kind of let it go dormant. I don't really mess with it. And because of that, it takes it a little bit longer to get going in the spring and summer when I bring it outside, but it's coming back and doing well. It's getting kind of tall and leggy though. I think I should give it a cut back, but it's got the fun little flowers getting ready to come out on it. And it seems happy. Hey Tobes, what you sniffing? Actually, I don't want to, I don't want to know what you're sniffing. Good boy, Tuck, get in there, cool off. Get your drink. That's a good boy. Makes me so happy. Last summer he was afraid to get in the pool. I think maybe the arthritis was a newer thing to him, so he was a little bit more nervous about taking that step down. And now he'll only get in over here in the deep end. He won't get in over on the shallow end, and I'm wondering if that's because he can see the steps better in contrast to the bottom, so maybe it's less intimidating. I don't know, just hypothesizing. I had another older dog, it was my grandpa's dog, She's in some older videos, but she also would only get in on the deep end. So maybe that's just, it has something to do with her vision, I'm guessing. I know I deviated from the plants. Did I mention that this is just kind of a whatever's gonna happen kind of video is gonna happen? Sorry. Probably should have said that in the beginning. Mule palms, looking great. Still one of my favorites. Look at how big and girthy those trunks are getting. Can you see them? You just have to take my word for it. If not, they're getting big. As far as the rest of this berm is concerned, I actually had to come through and rip a ton of these out because they were growing into this drain that's along the front of this. And since there's supposed to be a lot of rain tonight, if you hear discussing background sounds, that's Tucker. He always inhales water and then coughs it up. I don't know why he does it. Just gross dog sounds. Anyways, it's gonna rain a lot. Need to have this dug out for drainage. Otherwise the water floods across the entire patio and goes into the pool and turns the water a fun like milkshake color. And um, don't really need that to happen. So this just got very quickly dug out. I didn't do it, but I did pull the plants up they came up very easily i was a little bit hesitant about digging them up just because i love them so much but they also got so much bigger than i have ever ever seen these plants get at least where i live i've seen them get big in like the pacific northwest but we don't have similar weather but we did have a similar spring so i doubt that they'll get this big next year if they do i may have to rethink things a little bit because i do love them but i mean it's it's a bit much, at least as far as the ones with the all green foliage, the Gigantia, Pedicis Gigantia, those might need to get pulled and I could just leave the variegated ones because the variegated ones stay smaller and more compact. But it would appear that 
the ones with the larger leaves seem to be much more of an aggressive grower, which is fun. It might be fun like traveling up this hill where the oak is, but not in the front of a garden bed, right? Uh, I still like it. And like I said, they pulled up very easily. I have them over here. They look terrible, but here they are. I'm just going to cut the foliage back on them and I'll stick those roots into some moist potting soil and uh, probably plop them in the ground some time later in the year when things have cooled down. For now, I'm just going to keep the potted roots with some moist soil over here in a more shady location because they'll just, they'll cook. These aren't a very much of a heat tolerant plant. They can take the summer heat, but usually they look their absolute best spring up until July to mid-July and when things get really hot, they tend to kind of fizzle back, sort of like with the ostrich ferns. Uh, nothing's happened over here. Still just kind of a storage area for the plants, the Thai constellations doing okay. As far as, you know, I've talked about how I can't really get many projects done, uh, which I'm not stressing over. That's just, you know, it's the way things are and it's okay. But one thing that I am absolutely certain I have to get done, hopefully in the next couple weeks, is get this plant repotted because it has really, really outgrown that pot down there and it would grow a lot more fast. It would grow more quickly if it had an appropriate sized pot. Though I've seen Monstera deliciosas get very big and massive in tiny little pots. You just have to water them a lot. And by a lot, I mean frequently, but they do okay. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put mine through that. I would rather it be in something more stable so I can get it staked up appropriately. That's the problem with this little pot is it's too small for me to get a good support stake in there. That's the only project I'm certain about getting done and everything else is just kind of up in there and it's like, oh, we'll see what happens other than getting some palm trees and things in the ground. <laughs> there are some buds in the hydrangea trees. That's gonna be really pretty when those get going. They're a little bit late to it this year. I don't know what that's about. Maybe it was so cool this spring. That's gross, but you're cute, so it's okay. Are you okay, Tuck? Just having a little pukey party in the pool? Nothing gross about that. <laughs> Over here along the wall, the things that need to be planted. I have a lot of things tucked away and hidden back here. This, I just arranged things that they would be easier for the person who's helping me out to water them, because uh, you know, I can't be out in the sun and sweating. And I've explained it, y'all know what's going on. So things are a little bit more, I'm not gonna say tidy, but just easier to get to. You see this green canna right here? See that back there? The thing that's out of focus? What the heck's that about? This is from the video where I planted up the banana canna rhizomes, which are over here. And then the canna Stuttgarts, Stuttgart, however you, the variegated, uh, that's not variegated. And then there's another one back there behind that banana canna. It's not variegated either. And only two of like the six I planted came up. So I got had, they just, they just straight up lied about that. Sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to put up their variegated foliage, but I've grown them before and usually by this size, you start to see some variegation. And I planted like six of them and only two of them are coming up. I, that could be because the spring was just so weird. It got warm and then got cool. It set back some things with my gingers as well. But I mean, the banana cannas are, they're doing fine. I'm going to plant those in the back of the different garden bed and make kind of a background. They look like banana cannas to me. The leaves are far apart like they should be. They're a little bit more red than others I've seen in person. They're more red. You just have to trust me. But they're doing well. But the again, the variegated canna, I think that that was a lie. I have a wall of hibiscus back here. They were all supposed to get planted. They will eventually someday. This here's Hope, and then here's some of the palms I was talking about. These are Sable Miners. I have a couple more of them over here, and I have some smaller ones. These will get kind of staggered around the garden beds, hopefully sometime soon, ideally. Sometime in the next few weeks. And that pretty much does it. Like I said, not a ton's happened out here. Just been... <sighs> See this? I've talked about this. When he goes, he turns into a dognado. That's why I can't plant delicate things in these planters because his favorite thing to do is get out of the pool and run around the pots. And he's an old man and he's a sweetheart, so let him do it. I'm not gonna get upset over a few broken flowers. It's fine. Uh, they look pretty, even the way they are, so it doesn't matter. As I was saying, not a lot's happened. Just been uh, growing. Plants have been growing, but not a lot of new things have been planted. May or may not change the next month. I don't know. Hopefully it does, because that would mean that good things are happening. I wanted to give an update on the plants so you guys can see the growth because I really you know 
the whole month of June, the videos were very light and not a lot of garden stuff going on. So we haven't really, I don't think we've really walked around the garden and looked at the plants probably since May, right? Might have not have been since the May garden tour because June was just, you know, June. I may not be much better, but I'm hoping it will be. <laughs> again, again, thank you everyone so, so much for all of the love and support. Tucker, why are you leaving? Oh, I got your butt hair. That's not like I said butt hair. I meant to say his butt's all that's in frame. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. I can't even explain to everyone um, how good my mood has been whenever I see those comments. I've been reading through them. It's just so much love and support. It means so much to me. And, um, I don't know how to thank everybody enough, so uh, get back to doing projects when I can and when I feel like it. <laughs> look, at, look at that. Look at that. So, you know, one nice thing, I don't have to prune my petunias back very often. Tucker does a good job at keeping them cut back to just the right height for Tucker. The length of my petunias will always be the height of the Tucker as he dognados around the planters. All right, I'm going to go, like I said in the beginning, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I feel like I could set the camera here on Tucker and just, like, that could be it. That could be the whole video is just the dog running around being a spaz around these flower pots. Might happen someday. We will see. I am going to wrap it up because I waited to the last minute to film this video. Surprise, surprise. I had to wait for it to get cool enough outside that I didn't have to worry about coming out here and sweating or anything like that. So... There it is. Of course, as always, and of the utmost importance to everybody, keep on growing. Tucker, come here. Come here, Tuck. Come on, come on. Tucker, come here. Come here. Bye, bye. Oh, you miss. You knew what you're doing. You dodging the camera. All right, say goodbye, Tuck. Oh, nope, not done destroying the petunias yet. Oh my gosh, Tucker. Look at, look at. <laughs> Tucker. Oh, Tucker. <laughs> the carnage. I love my pets.